everyone. Welcome to the Dunkelgrün podcast. This is episode 12 and today we have Sunday, the 10th of September 2017. My name is Anna and I am coming to you from Zurich in Switzerland. I am originally Austrian. I was born and raised in Austria and I came to Switzerland 10 years ago to study chemistry at the university. You can find me on Instagram and on Ravelry as Dunkelgrün and I also have a website dunkelgrün.com where you can find a lot of information about uh, the things I am doing. You can find show notes for this podcast, links to my Ravelry and uh, my Etsy shop and a lot of fun things if you're interested. So welcome back and thank you for tuning in today. It has been two weeks since my last episode and I didn't have so much time for crafting in the last week because I have started my new job. I have started at the science library of the University of Zurich where I'm going to be a scientific librarian. So I have quite a lot to learn. <laughs> for those of you who don't know me yet, I have a PhD in chemistry and this is now my first job after the PhD. So this first week of work was pretty exciting and a lot of new things and exciting things to learn, but also it was very exhausting as probably all of you can imagine and I didn't have so much time for crafting. Nevertheless, I have an episode today for you and I decided to uh, do a little different um, setup this time. I will start right away with knitting and I will talk about those admin things in between, like I will talk about the cal as I am showing you my project for the cal and there will be also a call for test knitters for my unicorn pattern. There will be a quick spinning segment as well this week. We didn't have that in a while. And the special segment this week will be, I will talk a little bit about the chemistry and properties of lanolin, which is wool fat or wool wax. If you have participated in the Summer Garment Cal, co-hosted by myself and Celeste of the Yarn to Table podcast, please stick around to the end of the episode because I will announce the winners of the Cal. And if you're curious to know what I am wearing, this is uh, my summer top that I knit for our summer garment cowl and I showed it to you as a finished project in episode 10, so I think so. I will link it so that you can see more information about this top that I'm wearing. And now let's dive right into knitting and I even have a finished project for you this week. And it is a bit of a deja vu because it's another bubble hat. I have already shown you my first bubble hat in the last episode. And because I said that I enjoyed making it very much and also I showed it to my family. And my brother also wanted to have one, so I made a second one. Let me show the, you the first one next to it. This one with the pompon is the one I made for myself and this is the one I made for my brother. And you can see that there's quite a difference in size. Actually, for this one here, I, for my own one, I added some extra rows of uh, stocking a stitch in the green segment here at the bottom before I started the pattern because I like slouchy hats. I like when I can put my hair, when I wear it up in a bun, I can put my hair inside and I like to have a hat with a lot of space. My brother, however, uh, does not like that so much. He has short hair and uh, he likes his hats to sit tightly around his head. And so I went down with the needle size for the ribbing. So I used here a three millimeter, which is a two and a half US size needle. And the pattern I did in the recommended needle size, which is four and a half or US seven. And then, actually, I think I didn't do any modifications here. I knit every row just as the pattern suggests. The yarn for both hats is the Jameson's uh, Shetland Heather. And this is a pure Shetland wool in wonderful heathered colors. And this one here, the blue, is the colorway Duck Egg. The green is the colorway Pippin. And here, the white is natural white and the black is Shetland black. And in my other one, you can see I didn't use the same white. I don't know if my camera is able to pick that up, but it's ivory, the color that I used for the 
for the bigger hat uh, for the white because I thought it would look nice a little bit more muted and not so much contrast. For my brother's hat though with this more vibrant green and blue I thought it might be nice to use the white, the proper white, the uh, natural white. And also for this hat I have made a pompon, I have just not attached it yet. When I was in Austria visiting my family, my mom showed me some pompons that my grandmother had made and I saw that my grandmother had always used two uh, threads to tie off the pompon in the end. And so I did that here also. I used a cotton thread to pull it really tightly so that everything is um, safe and no, no yarns can come out. And then I used also the, the yarn, the, the Shetland Heather, to tie it up a second time because with this one I can sew it on easier onto the hat. So it's not a 100% finished project yet, but it's finished knitting, ends are woven in and it's blocked. Oh yeah, and I should probably also show you the inside of the hat, right? So this is how my floats look like on the inside and I am very happy with my tension. I think I mentioned last time that the first bubble hat I made was my first time knitting color work with two hands with my uh, with continental and English knitting at the same time and in the beginning it felt very awkward and at some point I started to be able to do it and it was like learning how to ride a bike and I think also that my tension is pretty good and you can see that I catched I caught sorry I caught the floats um, on the on the longer parts of the sheep so it's it looks it looks like a proper color work project and I think I am I might be ready to make a bigger color work project I would like to make a sweater I have never done a big color work sweater but I think something like that might be coming up at some point that was it for finished projects let's move on to knitting in progress My works in progress this week are, there is nothing new, nothing you haven't seen already. The first one lives in this wonderful Hanna-Lisa Haferkamp project bag and these are my etc. socks. Here's the first sock, it was done already last week, the, or last episode. This is the etc. sock pattern by Verena Kors and we are currently having a knit along for this uh, pattern. So if you would like to join us, head over to the Ravelry group and check out the thread. There are some exciting prizes donated by Hanna-Lisa Haferkamp, the maker of this wonderful project bag, by Verena Kors, the designer of the socks, and also by Ovis Etc., which is where the wonderful yarn for this project comes from. So this is Ovis Etc. Kempisch Heideschab sock, in the Clyde Donker uh, sock set. Um, this is how far I am with my second sock. Last time I had just finished knitting the heel and now I have knitted a little bit of leg. To be honest, I had a more leg knitted already, but I was tired and it was late in the evening and I made a mistake. I thought, oh, it's so easy, this pattern. I don't even need to look down at all. I just know already how it goes and um, I was knitting along on the chart. Mm, I have a mess here with yarn. Here there is this lovely pattern of uh, um, twisted stitches and decreases and increases that form this like, it looks like a cable but it's not really a cable. And I thought that I knew what I was doing but I did not. So I was de increasing and decreasing at the wrong places and suddenly I I could not continue anymore because I realized I had decreased all those stitches that should be worked afterwards and I had to frog a lot of it and because this yarn is very fine it's not so easy to and it's also non superwash yarn it's not so easy to pick it up again afterwards um, but I managed and that's why I am not that far just because I was tired and yeah it happens, I think it happens to all of us. So if you like these socks and you are interested to join, there are already a couple of people participating and knitting these socks out of uh, wonderful yarns. Please head over to the Ravelry group and uh, enter and chat with us and yeah, have some fun knitting these socks. It's a really great pattern, it's very well written and 
the, the chart makes it easy and like fast to knit. It feels a bit like knitting self-striping because you have always uh, the next and the next segment to knit. My next work in progress lives in this wonderful project bag by Dark Hair Knits uh, from Slovakia and this is an indigo dyed uh, block printed fabric. I talked about that last episode. And in here is my unicorn pattern and I guess there is not much news for you. It's just that I have made a little progress with the legs so now I have three legs. Here is the body of my unicorn and I have three legs. It does not look like a lot because last time I had already one leg but actually I frogged part of the first leg also because I was not super happy with the shape and I redid it. So this is my own design. I am creating a pattern. I was also very busy with writing the pattern because I am using an excel spreadsheet to check on all the numbers if everything is correct and so far it looks pretty good and I also started to lay out the pattern and write it in a proper shape. The yarn I use for my unicorn, I didn't mention it last time so well, is my own hand dyed yarn and this is my organic merino DK base. It's DK weight yarn, it's not fingering weight but it might also be possible to make this unicorn in fingering weight yarn. It will just turn out a lot smaller I guess, maybe half the size of uh, of this, which might still be nice and cute, it would just be a small stuffy. So this is the official call for test knitters for this pattern and uh, this time I want to be a little more organized than with my previous test knit of my socks and I have put together some requirements for test knitters. I have received already a lot of uh, messages and comments all over different places of social media and I, this is unfortunately a little bit difficult for me to keep track and to uh, keep contact with people, especially the YouTube comments. I don't know uh, how to find people sometimes and so I decided that I only register people for the test date who send me an email because that is much easier for me to keep track. I can uh, save your email and then I don't need to go all over the internet to search all the people that have mentioned that they are interested. And the first important requirement to be a test knitter is that you need to have a scale that is able to measure small differences in weight. So that means a scale that displays 0.1 grams. I don't know how that would be in ounces, but it's not a kitchen scale. It's a finer scale that you would use to weigh dyes or yarn or I don't know what else people use those scales for. And yeah, this is important because I need to know how much yarn you use because this unicorn has a lot of different parts with small bits of yarn and while I can measure that by myself, that gives me a value, but I would have to knit a lot of unicorns in order to find out a like an average what other people would typically consume. And I would like to give that pretty accurately because you can see here the yellow is just a little bit but I would like to be able to tell people how much of this little bit of yellow they need to create that unicorn. So this is one thing that is really important for me uh, in this test knit. And also I would like to have a range of different experience levels. So I would like to have some advanced knitters, but also some not so advanced knitters. I fear that the pattern is a bit too complex for an absolute beginner, but if you're adventurous and you're learning fast, uh, maybe you can also participate if you have just been knitting for six months or so. So please, when you send me your email, let me know uh, your skill level and uh, then I can estimate, yeah, how, because I don't want to have 10 people that are super experienced knitters that know every, every little trick and hack. I would like to have maybe five experienced ones and five uh, not so experienced ones or yeah, so I will, as I just said a number, I will take about 10 test knitters. If it will be a little bit more, that is also fine. So the techniques that are used in the pattern, I will link them in the show notes. So please check dunkelgrün.com, the blog post of this episode, to see the list of techniques. And then in the email that you're sending me, please let me know if you're familiar with all these techniques or which techniques of these would be new to you, because 
that would be very nice. It's not that people who don't know these techniques will not be allowed to participate, but I would actually like to have people that don't know these techniques so well and participate so that I can figure out if the pattern is also clear to those people. So that's the reason for that. The deadline for finishing the unicorn will be October 6, 2017. I will first, I think this week, publish the, or send out the, the pattern uh, for the knitting part. And then I will create a picture tutorial on how to finish it. This I have not done yet, so this will uh, come afterwards. So the, the finishing deadline is October 6. And please sign up only if you have time and if you're able to make that deadline and not just because you want to have the pattern. I would be grateful for that. So the testing will be done via email and uh, we are going to use Google Docs, which was suggested by many people for exchanging information. Thank you to everybody who has suggested uh, methods of test knitting or platforms for test knitting. This was really helpful and um, yeah, so I went with the decision for email and Google Docs. And with this, I would like to come to spinning. It has been quite a while since I have shown you some of my spinning. And uh, this time I got uh, some new motivation because of the Knit Together project that was initiated by Melissa from Knitting the Stash. Her idea is that people from all around the world are going to knit little blanket squares, I think 8 by 8 inches, and this might be 20 by 20 centimeters. And these squares are then sent to Melissa and she's going to sew them together to a blanket. And in the end, all the people who have entered a blanket square are going to enter the giveaway for to decide a winner of the blanket. So the idea is that the square is something that is special to you. So I decided I wanted to spin my own yarn for that because of course to every spinner out there the, their own hand spun yarn is the most special and the most close to your heart yarn that you can get I guess. But I have decided that I also want the fiber content to be special so I went to my fiber stash and I have a collection of little bits of leftovers from various projects. You know when you're carding you have a little bit of carding waste or also from spinning these little bits that you maybe pull out of the fiber, these things I'm collecting. And I just throw to, threw together randomly different fibers and carded it up into Rolex and spun these Rolex into a yarn. And this is the result. So it's the fiber content is very diverse here. We have some merino in white and brown. We have Polworth. We have yak. Some of that brown stuff in here is yak. Alpaca also in brown. Uh, Tassa silk is in here and also some camel. And the dyed uh, little flags that you can see in here, the green ones, these are from a very special project. It was when my boyfriend visited me for the first time here in Switzerland. For those of you who don't know, my boyfriend is from Brazil and we lived in a long distance relationship for two years. So he visited me here in Switzerland during that time and this was the first time we dyed yarn together and I still have a little bit of leftovers from that and I put some specks of it into this yarn because it has a very special meaning to me. And the red is also from one of my first projects where I did um, dyeing, carding, spinning, and knitting something into a uh, finished project. I don't have that anymore, this was a gift, but it was one of my first uh, projects that involved many steps of, of the craft. So this is my yarn and I'm going to knit my square out of it. It's extremely soft and I like the texture of it. It's a bit rustic and colorful and still muted and colors that go very well together. So yeah, this is what I'm gonna use for my square. And if you're interested in the Knit Together project, um, I have a pair of needles and I am going to send them on. So I would like to send it to two people here in Switzerland. And these two people are Asita uh, Sidi from Sidi Spind and Magdalena from uh, Wolf und Schafe. 
And I, you the guys, if you're watching and you would like to participate, I am now tagging you. Of course, you can say that you don't want to participate, um, then I send it to someone else. But uh, yeah, I would like to choose you two because you are uh, two of my friends here in Switzerland who are active in the fiber community and so... Yeah, let me know if you want the needles or not. <laughs> so the other people, you can all also participate without getting tagged and getting sent needles by someone. You can just make a square and send it to Melissa. She has all the information in her podcast and in her blog. And then you're automatically participating in this awesome project. The next segment is going to be dyeing. So I have had some pots of leftover acid dyes that I wanted to use up that were already mixed with water and what I created were some wonderful jewel tones. Let me show them to you. These are all sock yarns, so 25% uh, nylon and 75% merino. And these here are the blues, bluish purples. They are wonderful variegated, like semi-solid tonal, not variegated, I think semi-solid tonal colors. And then I have also some purples, which I don't do that often. My boyfriend is always uh, complaining that I don't do enough purple. <laughs> so here are the purples. They look a bit like am amethyst, the jewel. And there's also some lavenderish spots in them. They are very lovely and in the same kind of mood I have two teals. They are a little bit different from each other. One has a little more green and the other one is a little more bluish. They are also very, very pretty. I'm really satisfied with those colors. And then of course, of course, we need to have some green because this is the Dunkel Green podcast. This is a wonderful dark green, a bottle, bottle green I would call that. I like this one very much. Finally, complementary to the green, I have two skeins of wonderful red. And oh wow, this is coming across very well on the camera, especially in contrast to my green background. These are the two wonderful Chinese reds that I created. And uh, these skeins, I am going to put them into the shop at some point. So these skeins are all going to be in my Etsy shop at some point and except for one of the purples my boyfriend has asked for a pair of socks in uh, one of these purples so the other ones are all going to go into my Etsy shop and now let's have a look at what was in my mailbox this week because it continues with awesome yummy yarn I have received two packages and they were both from the European Union one from the a very West country and the other one from a very East country in the European Union. So let's start in the West. I received some yarn from Portugal from Dyed by Alfinetti. I think that's how you pronounce it in European Portuguese. In Brazil that would be Alfinetti, but I don't think she's uh, pronouncing it like that. So I think it's Dyed by Alfinetti. And these are the two yarns that she has sent to me. You can also see the tag here. So this base is called Sul and it's 100% merino fingering weight and Paula dyes her yarns all one of a kind so they are all the way she dyes them are very is very intuitive and she's playing around and they're all one of a kind dyes and she has sent these for a giveaway so she sent two one is for giveaway and one is for me and she let me choose which one I want to keep. And now you're all going to think I'll take the green one. But actually, I love this red one. It's hard for me to find a red that I would like to wear. And this is certainly one of them. It's a wonderful, rich wine red. And I would like to use that. And what I'm going to do with that is actually a test knit. Because Paula is coming out with a shawl design and she asked me if I would be a test knitter using her yarn for that and I said yes. And so as soon as the pattern arrives I will start knitting it with this wonderful red skein. And this skein here will be in a giveaway but I don't know yet which giveaway it will be. We're going to see. I'm going to keep it as a prize 
for a giveaway. Thank you very much Paula for this generous package. I am super happy and you are really amazing. I have been following Paula on Instagram for a while where she posts her beautiful dyeing creations and I was always fascinated by them. And I have to say in person the yarn is extremely nice. It reminds me a bit of Malabrigo. It certainly has all the qualities that the famous Malabrigo yarn has. So check her out and very much recommend Dyed by Alfinette. The link will be in the show notes. And now let's move to the east. The wonderful Mary from Finland has sent me a package of Finnish yarn. And this is Tuku wool. And this is how the package looked like when I opened it. And a very cute little card with a cat smelling flowers. How cute is that? So these here are uh, Tuku wool fingering in the Lehto colorway. And this one here is Tuku wool sock in the Celia colorway. And of course she chose greens because with green you can never go wrong <laughs> with me. And I love them. They're super nice. The wool feels nice and sturdy. This is 100% Finnish wool, non-superwash. And then there's also this little mini skein here, which is also Tuku wool sock and this colorway is Kayo. Thank you so much Mieri. You made my day very happy when this arrived. And I am going to probably make something in color work with these wonderful yarns. These skeins are 50 grams each, so I have 150 grams plus a little accent color. Probably I could even make a shawl out of this, but color work shawl, I, I would not like to do color work flat. So maybe a cowl. I don't wear cowls so much, unlike when they are so closed. Maybe mittens? I don't know. Let's see what they are going to become. So finally we come to the special segment of this week, which will be about lanolin. I have been talking about Melissa from Knitting the Stash uh, previously with the Knit Together project. And Melissa recently had a podcast episode where she was talking about knitting in the grease. And she was kind of tagging me uh, with a question of if I have an idea how it's possible to reintroduce lanolin back into wool. I have actually, I am very interested in lanolin and I have had lanolin here in my house hold already for a couple of years. I will show you how it looks like. It is of a waxy consistency and looks like this. This batch I got from Spiecher Handwerk, which is a great place for a lot of lanolin products, they have soaps, um, cosmetics, a lot of stuff uh, made from lanolin there, if you're interested. And it's in Switzerland, I guess everyone who is in Switzerland already knows them because they sell also a lot of other stuff, like they carry Ashford products and they have a lot of wool carded and roving and a lot of, a lot of, a lot of amazing things. But if you're outside of Switzerland, um, I would also recommend you to check out their website. I'm going to link it in the show notes. So I am using lanolin as a lip balm. I just put it on my lips purely and I use it every day. And also I put it into the tips of my hair uh, because it um, keeps them from getting too dry. Also my dad uses lanolin even though he hates cosmetic products and he does not use any creams or stuff like this on his body because he hates that, like many men do. But uh, lanolin is the exception because it is quite different to all other kinds of creams, which is, the reason for this is probably that it is really similar to our own body grease and body fat, uh, or not body fat, no, skin, skin fat, I guess. Um, and that makes it very compatible with our skin. So what is lanolin actually? I have a wonderful book here, which I ordered. I have not read it completely yet, and I want to give a quick look at it. This is the Lanolin book, which is published by Bayersdorf, which is a, a German cosmetic company. They are well known for the Nivea cream and other skincare products. I don't want to make any advertisement here. This is just informational. I was not paid by them. So I bought this book used. It is a huge uh, source of information for everything about lanolin. It is a very scientific book. If you are a chemist and you're interested in lanolin, 
absolutely recommend it to you. If you don't have a scientific background, it might be a little bit challenging for you to read it because it is um, written very scientifically. But it contains references to all the studies that it mentions and it's a very thorough book. So what lanolin actually is, is uh, it's not a traditional fat. Lanolin is not a fat, it's a wax. It is produced in the glands in the skin of sheep and it is making up a lot of the weight of raw fleece, freshly shorn from the sheep. And then when the wool is washed, lanolin can be uh, gained from the washing water. Also lanolin does not really dissolve in water. It's uh, able to emulsify water. So it's, it can take up, I think, 100% of its weight in water. And that is pretty unique. So that's also what it does when you have it on your skin. It actually is able to store water inside your skin. And that's why it's such a good hum humidifier, hum humectant, I guess is what you call it, for your skin. And also in wool, it is, of course, it has evolved together with wool in uh, on the sheep. So it's the perfect companion for wool. and. Uh, it even enhances those water repelling properties that wool has because you know also wool is able to take up moisture without feeling wet and this property is even enhanced if the wool has its natural lanolin inside and now let's get back to the question of how you can actually get lanolin into your back into your wool you can emulsify lanolin in warm water you should not use too hot water because you can destroy the compounds. The chemical composition of lanolin is very complex. It has thousands of different compounds inside and these are all described here in this lovely book. If you guys are interested, I would love to talk about that in a future episode or in a separate video. Let me know if you're interested in a little review in depth about lanolin because I think in this episode I won't have time and I have also not read the full book yet. But the question is how you can get lanolin back into wool is you can actually emulsify it into warm water. So you would take uh, maybe a spoonful of lanolin and a liter of water that is warm and then you can blend the lanolin in either using a whisk or a stick blender and in order to help with that you can also add a little bit of dish detergent or wool wash but it should also work without any detergent just with the lanolin and the water you just have to stir it quite well until it forms an emulsion and then you can put your wool in there to soak and it's going to uh, soak up the lanolin again. It does not bind the lanolin chemically, it's just a physical attraction between the wool and the lanolin. And if you have happened to put too much, if your wool starts to feel greasy afterwards, you can just wash it again with a good wool wash or with a scouring agent, just like you would wash raw fleece. As I said before, I am very interested in using lanolin for skincare because it has such amazing properties uh, for our skin, especially if you have dry skin. And I am interested in making some soaps and lotion bars myself containing lanolin. I have already done some experiments with soaps and these are the two that I made. I just made uh, one bar of each recipe just to try the formula. This one here is with coconut oil, lanolin and olive oil. And this one here is the same ingredients but it uh, instead of the olive oil I have used cocoa butter and this is scented with lavender and this one with cinnamon and vanilla and the cocoa butter gives it some smell as well so it smells like it smells like uh, cinnamon chocolate or so white chocolate cinnamon -y. it's really good and I haven't tried these bars yet I have to store them still for a couple of weeks because when you make cold process soap which is what I used here for making these soaps you need to store them uh, before they have their final properties. I will store them for a couple more weeks and then I will try them out and report for you. So let me know if you guys, uh, some of you guys might be soap makers as well. I would be interested if you have any tips if some of you make lanolin soaps. Of course, you don't need to share a recipe if you don't feel like it, but uh, I would be interested in that topic. So. The next thing I'm going to try is make a solid uh, lotion bar into which I will put some lanolin. So I will keep you 
post it on that. We get to the final part of this episode, which is the giveaway of the Summer Garment Cal. We have three winners for the Summer Garment Cal with three very generously donated prizes. Thank you very much again at this point to everybody who donated a prize. The first one is the Malia Mania yarn. I will put a picture up here, which is hand dyed by Swiss indie dyer Babette and you can find this yarn at maliamania.com. I will include the link in the show notes. And the winner for this prize is number 63, and the name of this Ravelry member is SGT Griffs Girl. And this is Jessica from the US. Congratulations, Jessica! So Jessica made a, a cute little cropped sweater, which I think looks very nice on her, and she absolutely deserves this prize. The next prize that we have was donated by Jajuska from Poland, who also participated in the knit along. And it is a Midara wool chess, which is a Lithuanian yarn uh, in a wonderful rainbow gradient. And this yarn goes to the post number 47, which was written by Emisa from Finland. Congratulations, Emina. Emisa, sorry. She made a lovely uh, cardigan from a cotton blend yarn. And finally, we have these cute little knit motivators, which were donated by Mirja, who is also a Ravelry member and participated in the knit along. And these go to number 35, which is Adebar from Germany. I don't, didn't find out your name, but she made a short sleeved sweater in red, which also looked very lovely. Congratulations to all the winners of the prizes. I am very happy that there so many people participated in the Cal and there was so much inspiration happening. If you are one of the winners, please, as usual, contact me either on Ravelry or on Instagram or by email, any way uh, works. Just let me know that uh, you won the prize and send me your address so that I can send it out to you. So this is it for this episode. Thank you everyone for coming back and if you checked it out for the first time, I hope that you enjoyed it. And I hope that you all have a lovely week ahead. You enjoy the beginning of autumn and see you soon. Bye!